Hello. Hello. My name is Thomas Allen, and today I'll be talking about the concept I refer to as Chetha Moma, or as it's translated, more Choctaw. And this concept is actually a practice and the importance of implementing cultural trainings within the workplace. And so why is this important? That is because I have actually worked for the tribe for 10 years. I have worked both on the commerce perspective and I have also worked on the gaming perspective. And Hoito, or hello. My name is Thomas Olive. And today I will be talking about Halito, or hello. My name is Thomas Olive, and I will be talking today about a concept I refer to as Chutha Moma, or as it's translated, more Choctaw. And so this concept, this idea, is the practice and importance of implementing cultural trainings within the workplace. I have worked for the tribe for almost a decade. I have worked in both commerce and government. And within both of these branches of the Choctaw Nation, I have seen a drastic lack of cultural identity, of what I generally refer to as cultural fluency. And so I've taken it upon myself these past couple weeks to kind of put together a survey. I went around and asked associates, tribal members, and guests, what do you think of when I say Choctaw? Now, it may not surprise you, the number one answer is the casino. And that's because since the 1970s, we, the tribe, has used our name as a marketing forefront for our gaming industry. Our casinos, as of the 2020 Address to the Nation, produce roughly 50% of our annual income the importance that we put on gaming can be summed up in this year alone. As a matter of fact, this year, we actually finished the expansion of the Choctaw Casino and Resort here in Durant, Oklahoma. This expansion actually costed $600 million. This is the largest single purchase the tribe has ever made in the history of our people. Now, since gaming does generate such a large portion of our revenue, it makes sense to put such an importance within it. However, does this importance make up for a lack of cultural presence within our tribe, within our businesses, and specifically within our associates? Speaking of our associates, the number two answer that I seem to get when I ask this question what do you think of when I say Choctaw, came from associates and tribal members alike. And their answer was the Labor Day Festival. When they answered the Labor Day Festival, they talked about the events that go on. Maybe softball, maybe volunteering to work the trash pickup or volunteer at one of the tents. However, very few of those who answered Labor Day actually knew that it had ties, cultural ties, to our ancient celebration we refer to as the green corn ceremony. And so even though there is some cultural presence within a few of our associates, that cultural fluency, that being able to understand that the Choctaw Nation has a culture before it has a business is lacking drastically. And so I keep saying, what is Choctaw? When I ask the guests, when I ask the associates, when I ask our tribal members, I left it very broad because Choctaw is such a broad term. It can mean so much 
to so many people. And so to me, Choctaw is the people. It's every individual tribal member that makes up our whole tribe. Whether they live here in Oklahoma, in California, in Mississippi, their individual perspectives, their individual traditions and cultures make up who we are as the Choctaw people. Choctaw is our culture. We, the Choctaw Nation, have had a culture that has existed for 14,000 plus years. And this culture is still alive today. It is still practiced by numerous cultural members. However, it is not practiced in a wide audience of associates. As a matter of fact, here in just a couple slides, I've got a story that might interest you in how we view culture within the workplace. But back to what is culture or what is Choctaw? Choctaw is also a nation. It is a federal government within the federal government. And so there is so much history, there's so much legal practices to just being Choctaw in America. And so all of this can be wrapped up into numerous trainings. And so what to teach when we have these cultural trainings? Well, we can teach history, the Trail of Tears, our cultural practices thousands of years ago, treaties. We can even talk about our current history. Our government that we use today was generally established in the re-ratification of our constitution in the 1970s. However, this is something that general people, associates who work for the very tribe, don't know. And so we can talk about history, the language. We, the Choctaw people, our, are our language. Our language makes up who we are and it separates us from any other culture. And then of course the culture itself. What we do both physically and what we do internally, what we believe, what we think, how we view the world is our culture. And it could, it should, and it can be experienced by all associates through our Hashonti program, utilizing mandated cultural teachings. Association through associates. And so our associates are powerful tools. We teach the ICBI seven key tip trainings on how to approach guests, how to deliver a wonderful guest experience. But in this, we rarely talk about utilizing and implementing Chutta knowledge and culture. And so what we potentially could have are culturally educated associates Associates who come to the tribe, who work for the tribe, but also learn about the tribe, who take this knowledge into their guest interactions, into their business interactions, and then back home to their personal interactions in their personal lives. One culturally educated associate can affect three different interactions within their life, within their work. And so the story that I wanted to talk about actually happened just a few weeks ago. My department wanted to do a team building exercise. And so to utilize this exercise, we actually went and played dodgeball, a competitive sport that is known for its brutality, its abuse, and its general negative connotations towards bullying. When asked, why we couldn't do something culturally inclined. Stick ball, a chuppy, basket weaving, something that could bring us together not only as team members, but as tribal citizens and or tribal associates. It was merely said that that's because that's the cultural training. And that puzzled me. So to be Choctaw, I have to have a specialized training within the tribe, why can't the default automatically be Choctaw? 
Oh, we're having a team building today. All right, let's go play stickball. Oh, we're going to have, you know, a world language class. All right, we're learning Choctaw. That's because our associates are not fluent enough, are not comfortable enough to understand these concepts. We have many departments that consist of very few tribal members who have never participated in our culture. They have never played our games. They have never eaten our culinary foods. They have never practiced our crafts. And so as associates, they are lacking the most important part of what it means to work for the Choctaw Nation, and that's to be Choctaw. And so I'd like to leave you today with an idea that we, as associates, if we are not tribal members, are more. As a matter of fact, we are more than just a business. We are more than just employees making a check. We are Choctaw. More Choctaw. Chatamoma. Yako Ki, again, my name is Thomas Olive, and I would love to take time after this presentation for a Q&A and really kind of get some concepts or some more ideas generating and flowing. I generally like to hear what you experience as an associate within your workplace. Thank you.